Hi there, Purposeful People. My name's Rachel, and today I just wanted to make a video sharing my tips and steps to help you start a relationship with God or deepen your relationship with God in this new year. Um, the new year is the perfect time to begin and just strengthen your relationship with Him, and so I really just want to encourage you to seek Him out and give you practical ways to do that. So here we go. My first step is to just establish a consistent quiet time with Him. Keyword, consistent. We can't expect to grow closer to God when we aren't even in His Word each and every single day. It is in His Word that we learn who He is and what He's done and how much He loves us. So this step is really crucial. I encourage you to set aside time each day to be with God. I like to personally do this in the morning, like first thing, so it sets the tone for the rest of my day. I have my heart in the right place and I can just live it out that day. But any time works as long as you're reading His Word. At first, it doesn't have to be anything super crazy or super long or in-depth. I don't want you to be stressed over that. It's just a matter of actually reading His Word with the right heart posture. And so, um, take baby steps. We can't expect to just go and miraculously sit and be in God's Word for a whole hour when we haven't even spent five minutes in God's Word. So I don't want you to put that pressure on yourself that it has to be this big crazy thing. But I want you to take baby steps. Maybe it's just reading a chapter a day. Then you start journaling. Then you build upon that. Um, I don't want you to stress over what your Bible time looks like. I want it to be something between you and God and um, that just furthers your relationship with Him. So just focus on growing closer to Him through reading. My next step is to develop a prayer life. So this goes hand in hand with the last one. So just like we can't expect to be close to God when we aren't reading His Word, we can't expect to be close to God when we aren't communicating with Him. So prayer is just this communication tool that we have with God. And so we have to be actively communicating and listening to Him in order to grow close. It's just like a relationship. If we go without talking to someone we're close to for a couple of days, we're most likely going to feel distant from them. And that is the same thing that happens with God. So when we don't talk to Him for a couple of days, we're probably going to feel distant. And the key to solving that is to stay in constant flowing communication with Him. Prayer doesn't have to be something that you do um, verbally all the time. It doesn't have to be something you always have to close your eyes for and bow your head. You can pray anywhere, literally anywhere. And that's the amazing thing about prayer. Sometimes I'll just be driving in my car and I'll be praying. Sometimes I'll be in the shower and I will literally pray all throughout my shower. So um, it doesn't have to be this crazy thing where you sit in the closet and pray for like two hours. That's amazing if you do that. I love that. But um, you can just implement it into your daily life. And something else I want to make note of is that Prayer is not a one-sided conversation, and that's still something I'm trying to get better at. We have to actively be listening to God, not just pouring out our heart to Him, but we also need to be listening to Him. Um, so that's something I need to get better at, and I encourage you to as well. And I also just want us to check our hearts in our prayers. Some people can treat God like He's this genie, and He's not. I think it's great to give your desires and wants over to God but that's not all we should be doing in our prayers. I think it's important to praise God for who He is and what He's done and just thank Him for all the many blessings He's given to us and to just cast our fears and worries and anxieties onto Him because He takes our burdens and cares for us. So those are some important aspects of prayer that we sometimes neglect and I just wanted to make mention of. My next step is to get involved in a church and I know, I know, I know this seems kind of impossible in the times we're living in now with corona. I totally understand that. Um, in no way am I saying to go risk your health and go to a church that's unsafe and that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying find safe ways to still be involved in church. Many churches are doing drive-in services which are great because you just drive in your car and just listen to a sermon inside your car. You still see people. That's great. Um, many churches are doing like Facebook lives um, where you can tune in live regularly and just listen to the sermon, that's great. And many churches are uploading their sermons on YouTube, on TV, wherever it may be. However it may be, I think it's important to listen to sermons and be involved in a church. Church is great because it surrounds us with like-minded people, believers who encourage us in our walk with the Lord. I think this just strengthens us and it keeps us accountable. If we make a habit of going to church regularly, that will just help us, that won't hurt us. And so, um, I'm not saying that you need to only go to church, you need to also develop a consistent quiet time routine and a prayer life with God because um, the church 
can't be your savior. So I don't want you to fully rely on church and I don't want you to fully rely on the building itself because that's not the only place where you can worship. It's not limited to a building. It's not limited to those four walls. You can worship God wherever you are. And so I just encourage you to get plugged in in some form or fashion of a church, whether that be online or safely in person. Um, I just encourage you to do that. It is life-changing. My next tip is to surround yourself with good community. And this kind of goes hand in hand with um, getting involved in a church because that is such good community. But this is more, um, this is just even in your daily life, your friendship. I just wanted to read you this quote by Will Smith actually. And I, this quote has just changed my life and perspective and I love this. So I think it could really help you all as well. It says, you are who you associate with. Look around at your five closest friends, and that's who you are. If you don't want to be that person, you know what you got to do. And so this is so, so, so true. The people we're surrounded by definitely have an influence on us, whether we realize it or not. So it's really crucial and important to surround ourselves with good, kind people who constantly encourage us and strengthen us in our walk with the Lord. And we should also be those types of friends. So when I look at my friends, I literally see answered prayers like they are so so special and one of a kind and I just know that God has placed them in my life for a reason they keep me accountable they strengthen me they encourage me they show God's love to me each and every day they pray for me and those are the kinds of friends that will really make a difference in your life so um, I just love my friends and I'm so thankful for them and you may be thinking to yourself well how do I get those types of friends and I was there too once um, and it's hard, it really is. And so I came from a place of longing. I had prayed for good godly friends for the longest time. Um, and God hears our prayers and our desires and our cries and he answers those. And so um, just give him your heart's desires and he will provide. And also we can't expect to be surrounded by good godly friends when we aren't being one ourselves. So it's also our job to go out and initiate those friendships and I think that is also a very important element to that as well. My last step is to set your mind on things above. Many times in our lives there are things that are hindering us from reaching that full closeness of being in a relationship with God and we don't even realize it sometimes. So certain TV shows, songs, books, movies, influencers, and even relationships can actually be harming our relationship with God without us even noticing and so these are things that we need to take hold of and really evaluate and see whether they're good or bad and so one verse that can help you with this is Philippians 4 8 it says finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise think on these things and so this is the lens we should all be using when determining if something is good for our spiritual health or if it's deteriorating our spiritual health because um, ultimately what we consume is who we will be and so we are to be consuming good things so if you want to really um, evaluate that go to Philippians 4 8 and read that verse write it have it on your heart have it memorized um, and evaluate what you're listening and filling your mind with with that and also set your mind on things above. That is found in Colossians 3.1, so I encourage you to look at that verse as well. And just that would help you tremendously when you're determining these things. There are so many other tips and steps I could include on how to grow and start a relationship with God. These are some of the main ones that stick out in my mind, so I just wanted to share them with you today. If you have any um, specific tips and steps in your own personal life, leave them down in the comments below. I love for this to be just a place of community, of us uplifting and encouraging one another um, to grow. So yes, thank you so, so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!